Welcome to this little video about curve fitting. I will quickly explain the concept of curve fitting and then we're going to take a look at curve fitting in GNU plot. Oftentimes when you have two dimensional data like this, we'd like to draw some curve through the data to give the viewer some idea of what the underlying model might look like. This is called fitting and it's an important part of scientific work. Say you have some data points, that is, you have a collection of x values and corresponding y values, and you're quite confident in your x values. But the y values, they look like there might be some error to them. They do not appear to be lying on a smooth curve. Now the question that you should be asking is, which smooth curve is most likely to have produced this data? So from all possible curves that could describe this data, we want to pick the curve where the data deviates as little as possible from the curve. Now, of course, every set of points, assuming no x value appears more than once, can be interpolated with a polynomial of high enough order, but that usually leads to overfitting, which looks somewhat like this and makes no sense whatsoever. Most often you want your function to be comparatively simple, but how do you find and decide on a fit function? Well, that's where you come in, because that's a part that can't really be done by a computer. Either you need to look at the data and say, oh, that looks like an exponential curve, or that looks like a polynomial of some degree, or a logarithmic curve, or whatever. Or the other option is that you have some model that already predicts the shape of your curve. And thankfully in physics that's usually the case. So if you've been measuring radioactive decay, for example, you already know that you're looking for an exponential function. So you write down the most general exponential function, which is a times e to the minus bx, where a and b are some presumably positive constants. And our goal is now to tweak these constants, to tweak the values of a and b such that our data deviates the least possible amount from the curve. In order to tackle this problem with math, we need to cook this whole notion of data points fit the curve nicely if no data point is too far away, but small deviations are likely measuring errors, while well, large deviations should really be punished, and so on, into a single number, or more precisely a function, that depends on all the data points and the parameters of our curve. So in our case that's the a and the b. I will call this function the error function and denote it by s of x sub i, y sub i, a and b. So the error function depends on your data points, that's what I mean by x sub i and y sub i, and all the parameters of your most general function, the exponential in our case, so that's a and b. And what you usually do with that error function is write a sum over all the data points, so i is the index, and then you take y sub i minus f of x sub i a b. So that's the y distance between the data point and the curve. Then you take the square of that distance. And I'm afraid I cannot make a compelling argument why it's got to be a square other than every other option usually tends to be worse. Like taking the absolute value of the distance does not only introduce a function that's not differentiable, the absolute value function, but it also doesn't punish large deviations from the curve quite enough. And introducing a fourth power would theoretically be possible, but it has much more complicated derivative. The squared error function is simple, and it works really well for almost any fitting problem. Note that I included a and b in the argument of f, and although a and b are meant to be constants once we're done, they must be varied first to find the minimum error. So in some sense the function f is also a function of a and b, and can for example be differentiated with respect to a or b. This kind of error function is called sum of squared residuals, or SSR. Now a final thing you can do is introduce weights for the data points. This means that each data point is assigned a number that I call w. And if your data point is more reliable, that w will be a higher number. And if it's less reliable, it will be a smaller number. As you know, every single measurement you take has some error to it. And assuming that your measuring error follows a normal distribution for each data point, you can specify the standard deviation of that distribution. And w sub i is then 1 over the square of the standard deviation of that measurement. If the measurement error for each data point is expected to be the same, the weights are the same for each data point and they won't change the fit function, since the error function still has the same minimum. But if weights are introduced, we get a little more information on how good the fit actually is. And we're going to see that in the second part of the video. 
And if weights are introduced, the error function is then called the weighted sum of squared residuals, or WSSR. So now that we understand curve fitting, let's see how it works in GNUplot. All right, so I've opened up GNUplot and I would like to bring up my data real quick. So as you can see, this is data from some exponential decay from some radioactive decay process that I fabricated. But you can roughly see the exponential decay. And we're now going to try and find an exponential fit function for this data. So the first thing we need to do is we need to define our fit function within GNUplot. So we choose a name, for instance, f of x equals and then we write our fit function in terms of our fit parameters. So these fit parameters are variables within GNUplot. So you can use any names you like that are not taken up for something else. So letters like A, B, C, D and so on are usually a good choice. And we could write for instance A times X plus B. That would be a linear fit. If you're looking for the power function, it's not done by this little hat symbol like it usually is but it's rather done by two asterisks in a row. So a times times two would be a squared, for example. We're looking for the exponential though, so we go a times exponential of minus b times x. And this function is now defined within GNUplot. Uh, we can't plot it though. If we try to plot it, we get an error message since variables a and b are not defined in GNUplot. And the whole purpose of the fit is to define these variables to find values for these fit parameters. And we do this by just writing fit f of x, then you write the data set, then you can use this using command to specify which columns the data comes from. That's just one and two for me, which is the default option anyway. Then you go via and then you list all your fit parameters. So that's A and B in our case. And then you hit enter. And note that we did an unweighted fit. So we had no weights. We didn't have any errors for our data points specified. So what Knuppler did was it tried to minimize that SSR error function, the sum of squares of residuals. And as you can see here, that number is quite low. Now this number actually depends on how much data points you have and how large the errors actually are in fact. So this doesn't have too much significance, but it should in general be a low number. And the other thing we can look at here is the final set of parameters. So we have a value for A, which is 1.13, and we have a value for B, which is 0.22. Now, when I fabricated this data, I actually chose the values 1 and 0 0.2. So there's quite some deviation and we're going to see why that is in a second. We did complete our fit, however, and it did exactly what we wanted it to do. And the values of A and B are now actually saved within GNUplot. So we can now use them to plot the function F. And we're going to plot it together with our data. And as you can see, we get a curve that fits our data really well. So the sum of the squared distances of data points to the curve is at a minimum. here. So this is unweighted fitting. But if we take a look at the data set that I produced and I actually did include errors for it in another data file, you can actually see that the errors for some measurements are much higher than those for others. And this is because I introduced a relative error. So the error was proportional to the value of the measurement itself. And that's actually a common occurrence. Whenever something is counted, for example, you don't get absolute errors, you get relative errors. And then the standard deviation of your measurement is larger for larger numbers and is smaller for smaller numbers. And this has to be taken into account when creating a fit function. So in your data set, you simply include the standard deviation of that measurement and as you can see, it's larger for larger values and it gets lower for lower values. And we now try to take this into account. Uh, we can reuse that fit function f of x. We can write new values into the variables a and b. That's not a problem at all. So we can start with our fit command once more. We're still fitting f of x. We now need to use the different data file. And now you could write using one two, three, 
but that's old syntax that's from gnuplot version 4 in gnuplot version 5 you're actually writing using 1 2 3 or nothing at all followed by the keyword y errors and this tells gnuplot that your data file actually contains errors for your measurements then you just finish off with via a b hit enter now let's see what we have here so it still says final sum of squares of residuals but what we actually printed here is now the WSSR, so the weighted sum of squares of residuals. As you can see, that's quite a large number. Still doesn't matter too much. What's interesting are these values here. The variance of residuals, reduced chi square, WSSR over NDF, which is the degrees of freedom, which is just the number of data points minus the number of fit parameters. This number here is very significant. This number should always be about one. If this is a high number, your fit function doesn't fit your data. So you might have the wrong model. The actual measurement followed another physical law that you didn't consider in your fit function. So your fit isn't too good. If this is a much lower number than one, this is a sign of overfitting. So then your fit function with all its parameters was actually so flexible that it already compensated for the measuring errors. And you don't want that because you don't want this case of overfitting where the curve is so flexible that it can adjust to every single measurement error. So this should be about 1 and 0.93 is perfectly fine here. But it shouldn't be much higher and it shouldn't be much lower. And then there's also this p value here, which is a value that ranges from 0 to 1 and this should be about 0.5. This is a, just a number that uh, indicates how likely it is that your data points really came from that exact model that you represented with your fit function and then some errors that followed a standard distribution applied to that model. And if this value is around 0.5, it's very likely that you got your model correct and that the error followed a standard distribution. So that's a good sign. This should always be around 0.5. Now we can move on to the final set of parameters. So we got another value for A here, and this time it's about one. And the value for B is about 0.2. And as I told you earlier, these are about the values that I actually used when I fabricated this data. So this fit was actually much more precise, and that's all due to the weights. So additional information yields a better fit. So let's plot it once more. Um, yeah, why not? Let's plot it with error bars. Visually, this might not even look better than the plot from before. Because what's now taken into account isn't just the sum of squared distances between uh, the curve and the data points, but these are also multiplied with the weights. So these actually carry more significance. But these values are actually more significant because the error on them is lower. So this is actually the better fit in some sense. It just doesn't look as good. But the parameters A and B are actually much more significant here. And if your aim is, for instance, to calculate the half-life of your material, the B value that we computed with the weighted sum of squared residuals, this value here, is actually much better approximation of the real value. And you should base your calculation of the half-life off of this exact value. So what's our main takeaway here? The unweighted fit is fine if you're just going for some visual representation of your data. It's also fine if the errors of your measurements are about the same. But as soon as the measurement errors of your single measurements deviate a lot from each other, you're gonna want to give these errors to GNUplot as additional information to work with and create a weighted fit. This doesn't improve the visual appearance of your curve, but it creates a much more precise fit that's actually scientifically more accurate and your fit parameters are going to be more accurate. And this is especially the case for relative errors which occur when your measurement consists of counting something. Because if you count larger numbers, you're going to have more miscounts. If you count lower numbers, you're going to have less miscounts. So the error is going to be even lower for lower numbers and the error is going to be higher for higher numbers. So keep that in mind, have fun creating fit functions for your data. I hope you liked what you saw, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and see you next time. Thanks for watching.